Uh, thank you so much for joining us today here at the Castle University. And it felt a bit surreal for us to finally make this event a realization. And before we start the keynote speak, uh, the talk for today, I'd like to introduce Annie Harpan Law as the representative of Discover Indonesia. Annie, the stage is yours. that we do here in Newcastle, where we show uh, locals and students population about uh, Indonesian culture through dances, traditional arts, etc. And so um, we have a trailer that you got, um, we want to show you guys. But also I want to tell you all that today the tickets are on sale. And it's an early bird ticket, so it's a 20% discount. So please um, scan the barcode that's everywhere Joking too, and we'll come after that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. We'd also like to welcome our honorary guests, which are Daniel Carr as the International Recruitment Manager. Daniel, please step down. And we also have Her Excellency Sanjana Mary Ali as the International Relations and Partnerships Manager. Finally, we have Her Excellency Caitlin Dixon as the event manager. Caitlin is looking after your event room, so she's not here. <laughs> okay, so everyone, today's talk is going to be more than a coffee talk, as we've been joined by a very important person, in fact, the most important Indonesian to live in the UK right now. So I'd like to invite to the chamber 
our father, the Indonesian ambassador to the UK, His Excellency, the Secretary PhD. Please welcome him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this right. in the start we're going to cover a few topics surrounding the partnership between Indonesia and the UK, such as G20 and the potential for a partnership in the maritime sector, in the education sector, and a few more as we move forward. But beforehand, I would like to ask you, how are you doing? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool, yeah. It's such an honor to have you here today with us. And I know that you used to study at Durham University way back in the 90s, which means you also have shared your time as a northerner. How do you like the north so far? I like it, but I can't stand with the wind. <laughs> <laughs> and the wind. And also, uh, what I miss. Uh, um, it used to be, there was a brewery company called Air Brown. It used to be a uh, co-sponsor to sponsor a new customer in Does anyone know that? I was here when you were not, many of you were not born yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, uh, but, but he is a good friend of mine. I think we were here uh, around 20 years ago. 20 years ago, time flies. I, and then I'm, I still have time. <laughs> because of, mind you, for those, those of you who took a PhD, take a picture when you start, take a picture when you finish. There might be three papers. Okay. Yeah. So the last day has been such an awesome issue for you. Okay. Okay, so now for the real talk. Uh, but before we dive deeper into the key topics, I'd like to add a little bit of historical context to the conversation. Could you share with us a bit overview on the bilateral relationship between Indonesia and the UK from the past up till the present? Yeah. Jody, one thing that we need to know is that we are not on the map of the United Kingdom. If you go to the street, where are you from? Indonesia. Where are you from? You know Bali? Yeah, Bali is <laughs> That's the fact. Yep. But don't be discouraged, because we were not colonized by the Brits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, jokingly, I, I joke with the, the Brits called Daniel. Your, your forefather made a mistake of not you know, having any interest in Indonesia. <laughs> you gave it to the Dutch, um, to the Netherlands, as a result, we suffered a lot. <laughs> We are struggling to speak English, and we don't speak Dutch at all. Yeah. My mom spoke Dutch, yes, but not the young generation. So I think blame it to your forefather for not having any interest in Indonesia. So I think my main task is to put Indonesia in the map of the United Kingdom. Next year we are going to next year we are going to celebrate 75 years of diplomatic relation between Indonesia and UK. This is going to be the right momentum. Last year, uh, both foreign ministers have signed what we call it roadmap partnership, 2022-2024. What is one of the pillars is uh, uh, innovation, research innovation, education. So I think again, education is at the core of bilateral relations between Indonesia and United Kingdom. Despite the fact uh, I arrived here in December 2020, I experienced three prime ministers already. And then, uh, forgive me for my joke, it takes uh, one prime minister with the same name to allow Her Majesty to pass away. Uh, three prime ministers, and I also experienced uh, when the, the passing of uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. If I can share with you two things. When I was invited to Buckingham Palace, I never had a dream of being driven in horse carriage uh, to the Buckingham Palace. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had a conversation with Her Majesty at that time. She was 95 years old. She was very sharp and she had a good memory of Indonesia. Secondly, when I was on the way to Buckingham Palace in a horse carriage driven, 
uh, people were, were shouting and yelling, are you king and queen? I said, oh yeah, we just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then thirdly, what I learned from my uh, experience and also memory um, is about football. My sympathy to Manchester United School. <laughs> 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 It's a bit, uh, a bit cool uh, for Arsenal to be on the top on its own. But I'm happy because United is uh, going back uh, to the era of Kevin Keegan yes. with the first team and Alan Shield. So I think what is uh, the memory of United Kingdom in England is football. Definitely. Okay, what is that? Now, um, I think you have prepared some <coughs> slides. Yes, I think there is one slide uh, for perhaps also for some Indonesian. Uh, when you look at the Indonesian map and you superimpose it with Europe, I think many people in Europe, I think they will be surprised how big Indonesia is. How big Indonesia? Where is Europe? Are you superimposing? Next one. Yes, so how big Indonesia is. So I think, uh, again, we will not know. Don't be discouraged. Uh, what is important for us, we have laid down for the future uh, of Indonesia and United Kingdom. And my conversation earlier also with the Vice Chancellor, we have agreed certain uh, avenue and certain steps to increase bilateral relations, particularly on education. And also, I'm happy uh, to know to, to know that uh, number of uh, Indonesian students in Newcastle and University, and also around 3,000 Indonesians studying in the United Kingdom. So I think what is important again from this uh, bilateral relations that we want to have mutually beneficial partnership of equal footing for a higher quality bilateral relations. So I think. This is just to show you, uh, for not, those who are not Indonesian, how big Indonesian, even I, I, I informed uh, Vice Chancellor, there are 270 million Indonesian population. He was a bit uh, taken back. He didn't realize how big Indonesia is. Okay, uh, there is a Okay, uh, we're, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk more about the education thing later on, but before that, uh, let's get into the hot topic for us in Indonesia, the G20. Okay. So what's Indonesia's role in the G20? As we know that there's been Indonesian presidency of G20 a few months ago. But Jody, before answering your question, okay. this is a uh, coffee cups. Oh, where's the coffee? Salsa, salsa. We'll provide us some coffee. Jody, um, I think many of you um, follow the news uh, and also follow very closely the G20. This is about cooperation, about broad, broad macro economics. However, in its development, it has been expanded to include uh, trade, sustainable development, health, agriculture, energy development, climate change, and anti corruption. Why is it important for Indonesia and UK? Definitely because both countries are member of uh, G20. Both countries are leading economics and vibrant democracies. That's why uh, there is uh, an opportunity, there is a room for those two countries to work together. For Indonesia, the uh, presidency of Indonesia, I think the focus uh, on three things, health architecture, digital based economic transformation and energy transition. I think from those three, I think UK has uh, an advantage uh, on those uh, three subjects and UK is in the best place to partner Indonesia within the context of G20 and those three uh, priority issues. Unfortunately, at that time, G20 uh, summit was overshadowed by the Ukraine-Russia war. True. But however, we managed to agree on what we call it leadership relations. 
This is really not expected because many countries think it's impossible to have any delegation from leaders uh, coming out of uh, G20, but we managed to have a uh, declaration agreed by all parties. More than that, when it comes to the um, um, follow-up, I think G20 Summit in Bali has been successful in producing 361 deliverables, among others what we call it JP, Just Energy Transition Partnership, valued at 20 billion US dollar. And again, UK play a very important role on that one. More than that, I can also share with you that G20 in Bali concluded uh, what we call it the Bali Compact and Bali Energy Transition Roadmap, valued at 81.6 million US dollars. I think uh, this is really a good uh, thing for Indonesia, and if you go everywhere, I think mostly in the uh, diplomatic community, many countries congratulated Indonesia for successful uh, championship presidency of G20, but what is important is what is next? Yeah. That's why uh, what is next, um, very important to follow up those developments, those numbers to be implemented, and follow up not only with regard to G20, because the torch of championship <coughs> of ASEAN now it is with us. Yeah. And in this regard, uh, the UK has also given its uh, support for Indonesia's championship. And UK and ASEAN, I think what is interesting, only last year the United Kingdom has been recognized, has been accepted as the dialogue partner of ASEAN. So I think this is uh, very encouraging, not only within G20 context, but furthermore, we work together within the context of ASEAN. Thank you. With, with also the sign of the Milan campaign, I see the partner, right? Um, Let's move on to the energy sector. What do you think the implications of, say, COP26 or the Greece and Paris Agreement will, and how would those things affect our relationship in the maritime and energy sector in the context of Indonesia and UK and the UK partnership? Yeah. Um, this is the thing. With regard to the energy uh, COP26 or COP27 and simple. Uh, the playing field has been set by the Western countries, right? as simple as that. In order to reach our uh, ambition of uh, net zero by 2060, we need cooperation, we need financing, and we also need technology. But don't forget, it has to be affordable technology. So I think it is unfair for many of uh, different countries to demand developing countries to fulfill the expectation of the world. Uh, to be example, if we are going to uh, exploit or make use of our forests and then the West, Western countries said, no, don't touch your forest. But remember what they did before. They did so many things, bad things about uh, their, their, their uh, forest. But what we are doing now is not only about exploiting Forest, making use of the forest, but we want to make sure if this is in such a way sustainable. Secondly, now you are talking about uh, net zero emission. Yes. What do you expect from countries in Africa, for example? Is it really a priority in climate change? For them, it's about food. For them, it's about primary needs of food, right? food security. So I think. There has to be, in this regard, cooperation between different countries and developing countries, especially the global south. And I would say the Paris Agreement and also COP26 and COP27, there has been agreement in which developed countries will, uh, is committed uh, 100 billion US dollar to finance uh, developing countries. But where the money is, no, never come, never has come. So again, I think what is important in this regard, especially for Indonesia, do not expect other countries to help you, but let's make our own effort. 
because that will be very important. We cannot rely on, on the outside, but we have to rely on our own. Again, at the end of the day, collaboration, cooperation is a must. Collaboration and cooperation. Cooperation is a must. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the involvement of Indonesia in the international maritime sector. As we know that you're part of IMO, the International Maritime Organization. Let's uh, could you give us a bit of overview regard in regards to the current Indonesia's involvement and, tri and the contribution to the maritime sector? Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Jody. I think in London there is one international organization uh, named International Maritime Organization, or IMO. I think we are working um, in that organization, uh, not only talking about uh, safety, security, climate change, and also uh, technical cooperation. We are very active on that one. But remember, during the COVID time, there were thousands of seabearers that have been abandoned. No country pay attention. And in this regard, Indonesia has promote, promoted and initiated an initiative to have a guidelines on the well-being of seabearers. And we are working on that now, and not only with IMO, but we are also working with uh, International Labour Organization in, 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 in Geneva, and, and we are working on that. Yeah, we it also is, have MLC, right? MLC, yes. It is, it is very important and to make sure that uh, countries are also responsible, and not only countries but business community also responsible to look after uh, seafarers from uh, many of, of the countries. Indonesia also um, actively uh, shapes uh, the IMO standards. I think that's also very important uh, in especially developing national assets based on the standards. So I think we are working on that uh, with big with, with, with countries as well. So I think one issue which is still pending is uh, with regard to the climate change. Yeah. There is uh, uh, what we call it reduction of green gas house emission. It is not part of the Paris conference, but we are now discussing how the, the, the maritime organization, how to protect our memory by reducing emission to our ocean. Okay, so, but how does this situation shape our foreign maritime policy? Um, you know, uh, Jokowi has uh, declared what we call it the Global Maritime Forum. I think uh, this has been in his uh, second term as well. And it is a priority because so far we have been psychologically or mentally putting the to see the ocean behind us, but for the for the government now is ocean in the front of us. Mm -hmm. A number of policies, uh, for example, on the issue of um, marine plastic debris, microplastic, mm -hmm. on the issue of, uh, of a coral initiative, on the um, trying to pay attention, especially countries in the Pacific, also the Philippines. We are working very closely on the mangrove as well, so many things. So I think with, this is uh, the one that we are working on. Okay, so the future challenge is more towards the environmental aspect. Yes, and also the issue of financing oh, yeah. and how we could involve uh, participations from the community. Mm. Okay. And there's one more topic that we will touch on before we get into the Q&A session. Let's talk about education. Let's talk about the educational relation between the UK and Indonesia. And could you provide us with a bit of overview on the difference between the education system in the UK and in Indonesia? Um, I have my education attaché, uh, who is more uh, expert than me, but at least what I can tell, uh, learning from my own experience here, um, when you are studying in Indonesia, there is a wisdom. God gives you two ears and one mouth, meaning that you have to listen more than you speak. Right? But it doesn't work here. <laughs> uh, secondly, you have to have a very critical thinking here. Mm. But if you apply it in Indonesia as if you are challenging, you, you are challenging the, the lecturer, for example. Thirdly, when you go to the, to the class, when you were in Indonesia, you just go, you don't have to read, you didn't have to read the materials. 
But here in class, if you don't create your materials, if you don't do your homework, you will be in yeah. and You cannot do anything, you cannot say anything. And thirdly, I think, even in terms of uh, valuation, giving the grade, I think this is here is more transparent. Right? But in Indonesia, if you ask your lecturer about why I only got C, why did I got B, I think you might be in trouble. Right? Yeah. But here, here is, is, is fine. This is the nature of it. And um, I think my, my, my experience as well here, um, systematic thinking is, is very important. What you can learn from here is open mind, systematic, critical, and everything is based on evidence. But in Indonesia, very often, unfortunately, if you are debating, uh, in Bahasa is pohonya, pohonya. But here it has to be evidence based. This is uh, some of the differences. But I think it was during my time. Mm. But I believe uh, there has been a lot of uh, progress as well in Indonesia. Uh, Professor Harry Munadi is also a lecturer in uh, Shah Kuala. I think uh, different now, but kind, right? But uh, better. better, right? <laughs> but the challenge now is reading. I'm not sure whether in studying in Indonesia educational system, uh, reading is very much encouraged. Because here, reading is, is a must. Uh, reading is very important. If you don't read, you'll be stupid. As simple as that. Right? But in Indonesia, if you don't read, it's fine. You can go to Google. You can Google everything in Indonesia. But not here. Pakem, would you like to add something on education? Hey, would you like to add something, Pakem? Yes, uh, just to add something. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, but I think it's not easy to speak in front of uh, Vanessa. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I think it's that exactly uh, some main differences between education system in Indonesia and in, in the UK, as mentioned by Patesa. But uh, rest is you that uh, currently our government is transforming this kind of system to address uh, many points that have been uh, <coughs> mentioned. And probably if you are familiar with the uh, recent initiative of the Ministry of Education, Culture and uh, research and technology called uh, Program Merdeka Belajar. There are three, now, now there are 23 episodes yeah, that uh, address that kind of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 that point that needs to be improved. Yeah. Uh, covering basic education until higher education. So, uh, with this kind of initiative, I believe, uh, I think we are now uh, progressing a lot and, and probably in, 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 in recent uh, future, we will have a, a much better educational system and of course after that we will have more, more effective uh, system in, in building our human capital. I think uh, that's all I guess we have some. Well, but uh, what do you think is the root cause to our educational problem? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are a series of questions. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, you see that, uh, you, we can see from, from the slide of Professor of, uh, just before, we are a huge country, so I very diverse. And one of the challenging points is that we have a quite different uh, quality of education in terms of teachers, in terms of uh, school facilities and so on. So this is the, one of the challenges that we have to address to, uh, short, uh, how to, say, to close the gap between the uh, uh, different yeah, inequality in different areas. And the other thing, I think, uh, yeah, we are now progressing. Um, Thank you so much, Bakayem. Um, give a applause to Bakayem. Uh, let's get
Sure. 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 If I may uh, share my own journey, right? Yeah, sure. um, I was born in Singosari, Malang, very small. Uh, yeah. Not many people <laughs> Then I went to Surabaya for my high school. Then I studied at the University of Rwanda. I didn't have any experience of going abroad until I joined the Central Press. But I learned, compared to uh, those graduates from UI, for example, we from Surabaya, we have some kind of um, Inferiority, inferiority complex as well. Right? When I went to Jakarta, uh, I met a colleague, a friend from Jakarta. Their daily language, their daily use of language is Lugua Lugo. <laughs> I'm not used to that because I, I'm from Surabaya. For me, it's like Kamu dan Sayo. Secondly, those from Jakarta, they are very confident. But when it comes to substance, not really. Yeah. So I think anak Jakarta, pedenya luar biasa. But the room is actually from India. <laughs> you know, that's why I encourage those who are not from Jakarta to pursue study right, abroad. Exactly this is what I did. I, when I was uh, accepted to join the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1986, you are not born yet. <laughs> <laughs> then what I did, I uh, applied for a, a chaplain. Then I was accepted. I studied in the region for my semester. It wasn't enough because I wanted to be competitive. In order to be com but competitive, carry on with your study, make yourself different than others. That would be very important. And again, I think like uh, Kaim said, uh, because of different areas, uh, different quality of education, uh, I think at that time, it was a challenge. But I think still a challenge when you talk about Eastern Papua in Indonesia. How could uh, colleagues from Papua is given the same opportunity with open competition? It's just impossible for them to compete with Anna <laughs> yeah? <laughs> no, it's impossible. So I think there has to be kind of uh, uh, affirmative action. So I think, uh, yes, so why so that first, uh, is, I first think of it, again, at the end of the day, what we can do is encourage you all to continue studying, excellent, uh, good is not enough, to be honest, good is not enough, and be open-minded, being uh, uh, those who study engineering, don't forget, you have to also take another subject, Management or economics, otherwise, you will be uh, Kuli. What is Kuli? Labor. 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 Because you have to, to, to be given and make something at the fair So, yeah. Well, it's okay. Thank you very much, sir. Um, yeah. Would you sh share or, you know, um, give some. Um, thoughts on what to do, I mean, for, for us, while we're here, what, what should we do while we're here? <laughs> for me, first, play hard, study hard. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we have to have a balanced life. Life is not about university. Beyond outside university, you have to have a life as well. And secondly, for me, I think what is important, try to learn as much as possible from here. Don't take, don't copy the negative thing. I know it, Friday night, it's terrible, right? Uh, especially in, in Glasgow. I don't know, in Newcastle, Daniel? It's more than the same, right? Much worse, actually. <laughs> so I think, take the positive thing. Uh, I think, for example, people respect the elderly here, right? And you have to queue, you will queue. Because why? Because you, your turn will come and you will carry. So I think adopt this positive thing. And, and thirdly, I think networking. Don't forget to make as wide as possible networking. When you leave Newcastle, it's not about the uh, certificate, no, but it's about your portfolio and your networking. People will not judge, will not judge you because of your 
sacrifier your academic quality, but because of you yourself. That is uh, very important. And lastly, make yourself known for the good reason. I hope that uh, answered. Okay, thank you very much. But it's, uh, now we're open to questions. Anyone want to ask? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, let's limit to three questions first. Anyone from? Uh, any lady you want to ask? <laughs> okay, we need female representation. So, first, any? Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rafi. First of all, uh, I would love to say thank you for the representative of Indonesia coming from far away here to Newcastle. Oh, and by the way, I'm from the University of Edinburgh, so I'm uh, quite surprised. <laughs> uh, also, I would like uh, to say thank you for the University of Newcastle, also the Indonesian community here for having um, this lovely event. It's, it's great. It's um, such a great hospitality. And yeah, without, without taking much more time, um, I would like to ask uh, a specific technical question uh, about in regards of Indonesia-UK uh, cooperation. So you've mentioned about the, the demand for trends, you've mentioned about like how it is in, in the government part and also in bilateral sort of uh, relation. Uh, and hence, uh, what I wanted to ask is, uh, what are the facilities that the Embassy of Indonesia in the UK uh, is able to provide towards uh, businesses that want to export um, their goods here to the UK. So, me and my friends back in Indonesia, we have uh, this company, it's just created in 2023, January, it's called Sasta Coffee. We need to uh, uh, coffee in terms of uh, the, the agriculture, we need also the coffee in terms of Roasting, and we're planning to like import our coffee beans here. And one of the agendas of uh, the embassy is that to get Indonesia well known. And hence, um, our stakeholders as of now, what we have done since January is that uh, I've been talking to ECCI, uh, Edinburgh Climate Change Institute, for the sake of improving the uh, trade, fair trade label in Indonesia to be implemented. And then um, expand the market here in the UK to have that sense of credibility. We also in SASA have the um, we have contributed with Panada and Coffee Farmer Union to create uh, and uh, re refine a greenhouse a greenhouse there so that the coffee in terms of quality would be uh, better. And also uh, me here as a representative of SASA in the UK. Uh, we have talked with Edinburgh Innovation and Enter Enterprise about the business model and idea. So I was wondering uh, with the Embassy of Indonesia, uh, what is it that uh, we're able uh, to have conversation on? So yeah, thank you for it. <coughs> thank you very much for, for the question. Uh, at the Embassy, we do have a uh, trade attaché. And also, uh, Ale. Ale is uh, working for the economic section. You can have a conversation with him later on. And in, uh, in April, we are going to have a London Coffee Festival in, in London. So I think, I think uh, we are going to bring uh, Dua, Dua Coffee here. Dua Coffee and the other one is the big company. Uh, tuku, Tuku, Tuku. Tuku, Tuku. And Coffee uh, Kinana, I think the owner of the there are also different uh, companies with the possibility of uh, opening the But when it comes to uh, importing uh, beans, uh, I think the Chinese is there is no single only uh, in, in here in the UK. The Chinese is about sensitivity of supply and sensitivity of the uh, quality. I think, I think we are working on that, but I think they probably will uh, uh, arrange uh, any conversation with. Uh, economic and democracy in London. Uh, he's a guy, uh, Alexander. Yeah, we, we had conversation oh, yeah. prior to the... Mike, can you tell me? Thank you, Mike. Any more questions? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Simon Benson, I'm from the School of Engineering, I'm a lecturer there. And first of all, it's incredible to see so many enthusiastic and amusing students here. I really appreciate it. 
think I need to now go to Indonesia and tell you all about that sort of engineering anyway. That's for another day. Um, um, I was really interested in your comments. You said about putting the ocean in front of us, and also you said about food security. I'm a naval architect, so I do all sorts of things about boats. I'm particularly interested in um, small scale fishing. I, I, Google tells you everything, I just looked up. Two and a half million people in Indonesia are fishers, and there's probably many millions more involved in that sector. It's probably, I, I know it's dominated by small boats, you know, subsistence fishing. Um, I, I'd be interested in your thoughts in that sector as you move forward, and you know, the sustainability of that sector, and how I think it's sort of a catalyst for actually also all the other objectives around protecting our oceans. So I'd be just interested in your thoughts in, from an Indonesian perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for your, your question. This is exactly one of our objectives to come to Newcastle University. Uh, we had a discussion, I think Daniel was uh, in the room as well, uh, exactly how we can use uh, not only on uh, fishery, but also on agriculture, for example. Um, apart from the issue of health and security, we did discuss extensively about uh, uh, fishery and how to make some use of uh, fishing, uh, fishing industry in Indonesia and using the, the technology, for example. This is uh, uh, the issue, and I think Newcastle is also, Newcastle University is very advanced on this of uh, marine uh, technology. So uh, please uh, share your expertise with the Indonesian children, and I do believe when they return back to Indonesia, they will be uh, very useful. And I think we do also have. Uh, Incoming students who may be uh, scholarship from the government, the LPDP, I think we will encourage not only those studying social sciences but on the uh, STEM and also based on the, the need, the, the demand in Indonesia and what the often is uh, uh, fishing. We are, to be honest, we are also afraid when you look at the uh, South China Sea around Natuna Island, I think our fish has been. Uh, stolen by neighbors from the north. So I think we need to, to strengthen our uh, food security and also security by using more advanced technology. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Josephine Cassandra. I'm currently a graphic design student in the neighboring university, Northumbria University. And I would like to ask regarding um, the problem edu of education in Indonesia. Um, this is like a chicken or egg question. Do you think which comes first um, for Indonesia? Is the challenge more to the lack of engagement in studying for Indonesians or the lack of resources that there is? Because I am also like doing a project on this and like how I can engage like Indonesians to study. And I found that there are very limited source resources for books and libraries in Indonesia. Um, so yeah, that's my question. Okay. <laughs> if you ask uh, chicken and egg, then because you asked me but chicken and egg. Yeah. Okay. You ask me egg or chicken, and then egg first. Okay. So, okay. No, what was that again? Is it D? Is it D? Uh, no, no, your, your question, what was that again? Oh, um, which comes first? Do you think the more the bigger challenge for Indonesia is the lack of engagement of Indonesians in studying, mm -hmm. or the limited resources that there is for them, like the sources for books, for like, yeah, the resources? Simple question. <laughs> so my simple answer, none of that. Actually, the, the mindset. Okay? The mindset uh, will drive the motivation, and that's we really most of 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 uh, uh, us in Indonesia lack of, of that kind of, of interest. So, so as uh, I I echo uh, Palesa message, let encourage yeah, everyone the blossom blossom <laughs> to have that kind of mindset, and then they will have their motivation, and after that, they will find their own way, as uh, uh, our living <laughs> example at this time. Okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
I remember very well um, when I was in Durham. I used to work as a cleaner in Mark and Spencer. Right? You don't believe it. I am very good in uh, mopping, dusting, <laughs> uh, buffing, but I'm tired of it doing it now. But at least you value uh, determination is very important. Right? And don't take things for granted that you will continue having this privilege. You have to maintain it, you have to sustain it, and you have to excel. The Bible of the fittest. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Taufik. Uh, I'm a PhD student in Darwin University. Uh, I'd like first to thank Tessa and Tafem for being here. Of course, such a long travel this, uh, distance. Thank you for being here. And thank you for uh, Newcastle South for your supporting for this. And of course, thank you for PPE Newcastle. Thank you so much. I think this event would be here, would be there without you guys. Thank you so much. I think you guys are so much. I don't think I understand it's so complicated to arrange everything and arrange everything, especially to satisfy everyone. You have to bear it. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you so, so much for the acknowledgement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's it. Everything looks very great. So, uh, and first, uh, of course, as, um, as uh, students here, of course, all of us, uh, I believe all of us admire uh, this time, but, then, but then after hearing your talks, I think all of us admire you even more because the talk not just informative, but it's been so inspiring and learned a lot from your spirit and then the way you change your mindset and everything. So first thing, uh, I, I completely relate so much with what you said just now about being multidisciplined and being cross-discipline, because I myself, I'm learning finance, but then there's another section which is I'm learning Islamic finance, so there's another section there, so I need to be good at both sides in Islam and also in finance, but then Islam itself and finance that won't be enough for me now, because like as you mentioned, you should be completely just learn more, so I need to I need to learn from my junior in machine learning and AI. I need to learn from him, even the one who's younger than me. So I want to hear more from you, your experience, more about you being multidisciplinary because you, you give some hints about just now. So I think uh, listening to that will give us more uh, understanding. That's the first. And the second, and be the last, uh, you mentioned just now about the importance of collaboration and uh, cooperation. So we see here, uh, of course, I'm used to the kind of new student here in the UK, and I see here uh, Newcastle PPI has been very great. I was like thinking, if we have kind of like some collaborative works, like by everyone here in the UK, like we have here people from Edinburgh, and maybe from Durham, small city, but mashallah, we have Padesra from Durham. So if we have kind of like a, something like collaborate all of our efforts and our expertise, and then maybe we have some kind of event. I don't know, maybe in Newcastle, because you guys maybe in the middle, or in London, or maybe anywhere. Uh, it could be about education, could be about culture, or could be about education. I think everybody will be very happy, especially now. I think, of course, uh, apart from strike, I think transportation is pretty well. So, <laughs> so I think like people from Edinburgh going to London, or I don't think that there will be an issue. Thank you uh, again, and thank you, Melissa. <laughs> Uh, but Taufik, um, I only learned English uh, when I was at the secondary high school. I think many of you started earlier. Uh, that's why even my children, they were laughing at my English. That, that's not the way you pronounce uh, my children. Uh, when I joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, uh, we were recruited by Cameroon to what we call it, what they call it, creme de la creme uh, uh, scheme. So I haven't graduated yet, but they give me a scholarship. And then I, when I joined, I knew it. All my colleagues, uh, they have a very good uh, uh, English. So what I did, I took extra course, because I know I have to compete and be part with them. Not only English, I took also a French course. Oh, so I think uh, very, very, uh, for me it's very important, be different. 
I, I joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs together with uh, Martin Atalagawa. Well, he was uh, most of his time, he studied abroad in England, uh, even in boarding school, coming from the privileged uh, family. I also the same batch with people that know the current foreign minister. But at least what I understand, what I know from the very beginning, you have to be very competitive and always making self improvement. So I think at least I can probably say that uh, among my batch, not many of us speak French. So I think it's very important to make the edge uh, different uh, from, from that, that thing. And uh, again, in Cambo, I think that at that time there are not many doing a PhD. Although I know it very well, doing PhD is a torture, right? It's a torture. Exactly. It's a torture. I sympathize with you all doing it. Especially with the children, with the family. Um, let alone about money, right? For me, for my kids at the time to go to uh, McDonald's, I think once a month. Yeah, once I got my second. Once I got my second, then I treat them uh, to uh, McDonald's. But again, I think self-improvement is, is very important. Uh, at least what I can probably say is that I speak French, because uh, I know English is not enough. And the other thing about, about the, the event, I think, uh, yes, uh, the council will have uh, this country in Indonesia yep, in, May. But in May, but in London we are going to also have uh, experience in Indonesia like we did uh, last year. So I think those are all the events that we are going to, to do, and not only in London, in Newcastle, but also one in uh, Manchester. Just, but I, 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 I see a cultural festival. I see In London. PPE London. Pakai meeting Please, please. Please, please. No, no, no. Probably just to summarize, but <laughs> so I, I I can't agree more with what is mentioning about the the self improvement. Yeah. Uh, so I suggest you to understand the law of uh, compound interest. I think that's uh, expect a lot about uh, building the habit, yeah. atomic habits and so on. So, uh, it really makes a difference when you start small thing and then uh, continuously improving. And the interest will be not linear, but will be exponential. So it's very interesting the law of uh, compound interest. Thank you. Jody, thank you, I think about generation gap, right? <laughs> I think uh, you might fed up looking at your senior. Right? Uh, too bureaucratic and uh, old fashioned, but the young generation now, I think they don't really have much attention to bureaucracy or rules, right? Am I right? Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, they don't want to grow wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think uh, if I may uh, share and suggest, uh, maintain the value, uh, value, value as a nation, and also don't forget the manner. Right? As a nation, you will remain a nation. If you meet someone older, just do greetings or smile. Uh, because I noticed also the animation, they tend to be busy with the, the gadget, uh, less animation with people. And my last point, do respect your parents. Because I received a number of direct message that you don't, many of the students in UK, not many, a number of. <laughs> The parents said, what happened to my children? They don't respond my WhatsApp. <laughs> so I think please uh, send a message to your parents that you are doing okay. Because being the parents, they just want to see you safe and well. Uh, not always, not just contacting your parents when you have the problem. But if things go well, then also inform them. Please respond.
because uh, they are your That's my okay, So that would be the last one. And to conclude this session, sorry. Oh, probably I'm going to say something. <laughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome, Mr. Ambassador and Pak KM. Uh, actually, I just want to say a bit uh, about Newcastle. Right? Uh, actually, I stay here 1991 till 1999. Where's uh, Pak Risa? It's a student here. We are close together. And the most important thing, like, but as I said, networking, right? Even I'm in Indonesia, I also contact my supervisor. So when my wife got the LPP scholarship, I suggest her to go to Newcastle University because I love Newcastle. <laughs> and, again, <laughs> and then again, uh, yeah, when I finish the PhD here, and uh, we close with the university Indonesia rector, and we made international office. So that's uh, the most important thing that we made a international class. So we made, I mean, at that time, I, with uh, the other colleagues, contact all the universities, Sydney University, Newcastle University, about the collaboration. And first, we got uh, what we call it uh, IT, computing science, with the Sydney University. And the very difficult one is the uh, internet class for health and education, medical, medical science. So that's really difficult because we got uh, was it uh, have to change the syllabus because we got a tropical disease, and here it's different. But the other one, the easy one, is the Faculties of Law with the uh, Netherlands University because all of our uh, law is product from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So networking is the most important thing. So I'm here as well, still connect with my supervisor and they give, uh, what to call it, uh, facilities to do the research as well. And I found two or three compounds that's an uh, important thing. So again, please don't waste your time here. Learn more everything like Parisa said. Thank you very much, Parisa. And don't forget to contact with Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> so that was awesome. Um, to conclude the session, I would like to quote something from Parisa. First, good is not enough. Two, be open-minded, cooperative is a must, and agile, adaptive, relevant is a must also. Um, last, before you get out of that door, don't forget to make yourself relevant, okay? <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming here today. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hand a certificate from NASA. But, uh, and also we'll have a photo session after this, okay? Oh, Pak Desra mau tahu nih. Seperti yang gini ya.